it's a bank holiday weekend and I always make a point of never going out on bank holiday because the world seems to be full of people in a rush <laughs> and it is a beautiful day and I am thinking I might just go across the river later and do a bit of beach combing because it's very low tide and it's very sunny. It's fantastic at last. So back to the big boy and um, I should, should be a, a female really. I can't remember her name. Something exotic. Oats are named after women, aren't they? Anyhow, I just wanted to go through a slightly different method of uh, applying paper. Um, I like to use J cloths, and it's good to make them. I'm throwing the water down here. It's a good to uh, job to wet the J cloths. So you know they start off like that, fold them in half, and build up layers. I've got some on the go here. And then what I do is I rip paper. Paper has a, a groove, so I went to the paper bank and got broadsheets, and it's good to just rip them lengthways like that. If you go the other, the opposite way, they'll just go all over the place and won't work. It's all about just ease, really. Here we go. So what I do then is instead of wetting them, what I do. Is I take little bits and I lay them on top of the wet J cloths and then fold them over and then take another one and lay that on top. A little bit like the old-fashioned way of making uh, watercolour paper where the pulp was sort of lifted out on the Declan mould and then slid onto woolen blankets and the wool softly absorbed all the excess water on it, allowed it to sort of percolate through, if that's the right word, percolate, anyhow, it's allowed the water to pass through. So I keep on pressing those through like that, and then I might roll them up for a little while. But I've got a few over here that I did earlier on. I just wanted to see how they're getting on. Oh yes, fantastic. So now, instead of having crinkly paper, You've got this lovely stuff which isn't exactly wet, just damp, rather like fabric. And then what I do is I've mixed up um, about half PVA with war warmish water so that it's runny but, you know, a bit like a smoothie. And then I just um, paint it on over the top. This um, bowl, first of all, I made sure that I put on two or three coats of mod rock which is um, it's a plaster of Paris impregnated gauze often used used to be used in hospitals on orthopedic wards for you know broken limbs broken bones however it's fantastic in um, the crafty world and it is called mod rock but you get other things that are just the same and it just gives me that head start because it's it just dries like, you know, the stone, basically. So what I do is I cut off the lengths that I need, slide it through some warmish water, not too cold, because that would mean that the gauze just was rather brittle. And certainly not too hot, because the whole thing would just melt and float away, and I'd just be left with a sort of drippy bit of gauze. Just tepid water, and then lay it on, and it air dries, evaporates in no time, especially if you do it outside in the sun. Anyhow, now we've got to this stage, it's just about building up layers. So I just go straight across the middle like that. I've made a sort of lip around the edge because this is a recreation of a dish from about 1755 um, made in the Delft factory in London um, on the Thames. I found this, I found this on the Thames. I haven't got a clue where the Delft factory was. I don't know if it was on the Thames or not. Um, but what I wanted to do, I found this nice fragment and I started to try to recreate it. So I'm putting down the layers of paper first of all. And I'll do about um, half a dozen layers, like two at a time. But what I can do at this stage is just gently go over it because the paper is sort of damp and fabric like, it absorbs the. Um, watery glue really really well. Had the glue not been watered down it would do what I've just done with my finger then it would just you know 
damaged the paper and moved around too quickly. So here we go. A few more layers. Bring that one up there. And what I shall probably do when this layer is dry later on, because it's sunny so I can stick it outside, is I will um, mix up some paper pulp then and smear it over the outside. When I was down on the River Fowl a few days ago, it, I think it was last Sunday, I found this uh, workshop in the boatyard and they were, re they were renovating an old wooden clipper beautiful, beautiful old boat. It's had an amazing history. And they've taken all the side pieces off. I don't know what you call it, the main bits that go around the you know, the main body of the boat. And they were replacing them. But before they'd replaced them, they'd chamfered them and sawn them down. And there was this enormous big bin of beautiful smelling golden wood shavings of some hardwood, which obviously is perfect for making old wooden clippers. I don't know what it was. But there was a website reference and a Facebook reference there, so I'll put it up. And um, if you're interested in old wooden clippers, which you can't fail to be when you're staying in Cornwall, or anywhere with a history of sailing, I suppose, you'll be able to follow its, um, its new lease of life. So, there we go. And I shall just leave that now to dry out. And then make up the pulp. It. Oh, one thing I wanted to say is these things which I work on top of are brilliant. You get them from pet shops nowadays, I think, and they're just for when your house trainer puppy so that it wheezes on that and not the floor. But they're brilliant because they're plastic on one side and sort of quilted absorbent papery stuff on the inside, so you can have them either way. Just stops an awful lot of mess. So 